G'day guys, what's cracking? It's Ralph here and today I have a special treat for you. Yes, some very epic editing software that we're going to look at by the name of Luminar Neo. You may have heard of Luminar before. They've done various renditions of photo editing software with a reliance on AI and some other really cool stuff that we're going to look at today. So I'm going to take three photos that I've taken, one landscape, one astro and one portrait. This is not a very appealing portrait and we're going to run it through this program and as we do you can see what you think there's links in the description below if you want to look further and also it adds, it works as an add-on to Lightroom and even Photoshop so you can do some work in Photoshop and then you can outport to Lumina Neo you can do a bit more and you can back import into Photoshop or Lightroom seamlessly so shall we get cracking so here are the four photos I've chosen for today and I've chosen with a specific focus of allowing you to see what this software is capable of. So this is actually a Milky Way shot and if we double click that it takes us into the options for presets or edit. So if we go to presets and this is a landscape photograph so I can go down here to landscape and I might say it's uh, overcast. Let's go easy landscape even though it's not an easy landscape but this gives you easy options to put onto it. So let's have a look at this normal clean light sunset snowfall forest stream but here's what I like watch the long exposure look what the long exposure preset does look so you could start there so let's start there and we can determine how much is applied so we like that and then we're going to go to edit and it takes that into edit so three functions you really need to know about before we go any further first of all you can create layers the layers you can add funky things to your photograph should you choose to do so and it can build on those layers and then you can hide those layers by right clicking and going hide right clicking going hide you can also duplicate a layer so if I press if I select this one and press delete and then I select this one and press delete we now have two layers now the layer on top is the layer you work with and in this case we're going to do some work on this photograph and then we're going to compare it to this photograph and if I switch them around they're exactly the same now let's head over to here tools is the tools we use to apply something to this photograph so at the moment crop is set but let's if we drop down to essentials and we go to relight we have a different option so what happens is once you make a change here it affects in the edits so at the moment the edits contain the edits that the preset applied to your photograph so you can actually choose and affect the preset intentionally and deliberately or we can add to the preset and that's what we're going to do so let me just run you through on a landscape astro image what this can do if we go relight we can like brighten see it brightens down the bottom here and I can make it darker down the bottom so the nearest part it brightens and then the furthest part it brightens or it takes away and you can measure what sort of depth you want the brightness to reach as you apply it. Increase the depth, I'm going to increase the near because I like some of the detail that's down here. Let's go down to atmosphere. If I just go to edits you will see the relight changes are made here. If you want to change the effect of your tool you go into edits and you have changed the effect there it doesn't work any other way you can also select and see what it used to be like by holding that down and take it off hold it down take it off so you can see the change and if you want to revert back just re reset it you simply click reset tool we go tools so let's go atmosphere the AI option and I can put some fog in if I want some layered fog and just increase the amount of fog that's in that shot I actually don't want to muck around too much with this on this shot so I'm actually going to reset that so with all of these you can do a masking function which I'll get to in just a minute but what we can do is if we want to place a sun in this photograph we can place a sun center and it's just there we can drag it down let's the moon was actually coming up so let's just pretend it's a sun and then you can increase the amount that the sun shines you can have your overall look see how much it touches of the photograph the sun rays lengths so really long or really short it was sort of a sunburst the penetration you see the penetration through what is shooting through so for example the penetration through this line here we can go to sun settings I can make the sun bigger or I can make it smaller 
It takes all the fun out of things, doesn't it? But gosh, it's handy, especially if you want to just emphasize an element. We can change the glow radius or the sun glow amount. We can even change the ray settings to a number of rays or can randomize them so there's some thick and some thin. And we can make them warmer too. So I think this is a really helpful one, especially sometimes when you think, gosh, it's, it's warm. Sun warmth and the ray warmth. And there we go. And you might put that on and just be like, what they look like beforehand? Okay, yep, no worries. That's actually terrible. I don't want that on my photograph. It's only terrible because it's an astro shot and you wouldn't have a sun in the middle of the astro shot, would you? So we scoop down to dramatic. Dramatic, you can change the amount of drama in the photograph. So if we just take our finger off that, and you'll see it's become darker up here. But this is the core of the Milky Way, which we really want to emphasize. So let me just push it down, push it down, local contrast. And obviously for different photos, you use different functions. I'm going to leave it just there. Let's go to mood. You can choose your LUT, you can put in a LUT, or you can choose one of these, which might suit exactly what you want to use and have available to you. And again, you can just go through them all. Let's go Manhattan. Let's put Manhattan on. Let's create a bit of contrast. You see the color slowly coming through just there. You click in to zoom in and you can spread your fingers on your mouse pad uh, to go even further, or you can just um, select how far you zoom in there and the actions you might want to take there. You can save a preset. So if you create a preset, you want to save the preset to use it later on, you can do that. Very, very handy, right? I'm going to increase the saturation on that. I love how this is coming through just here. Let's go down to toning. So toning the highlights. So I can increase the saturation in the highlights and then the shadows. I can increase the so that's just not, it's not too bad, but I might go, let's go a different color and we can scheme along until we find a color that we think best represents what we saw that night. And that was nothing like I saw last night, but I like it. I like it. All right, Matt, Matt just flattens out the image. So you can flatten it out should you choose. You can make it faded. Oh, I'm not a big fan of matte finish on my photos. Mystical adds a sense of mystery to it, right? You've got all these tools and I'm loving, I'm loving how this is coming up and looking. And this is a raw image I put in to Lumina Neo for us to play around with. If you put raw images in, you have more control over the edit than you do if you put a JPEG in. And I can colorize this if I want. Uh, now let's go glow, glow, I can go soft focus, glow, Orton effect or Orton effect soft. Some people love that Orton effect. I've got a good mate who loves it. And you can just choose between which one you like to get the results you like. And film grain gives you that kind of old look. Uh, just adds more noise into the photograph. So if we go all the way up to essentials, I can then just edit this as I might normally. So I might increase the whites on this normally. I might decrease the blacks. I might um, take down the shadows. I might increase the highlights just as I normally might would. I can do a smart contrast and look how epic this Milky Way part is looking here, even though it has the potential to be washed out by the upcoming moon. And then of course you can change the exposure to be brighter or less. I can do curves. So I have control of my curves and control of each of that. So I can take my red, I can decrease the shadow effect of the red and that's what I get. If I double click on that, it goes back to how it was. If I get into color, I can change the saturation. Double click to go back. The vibrance, don't mind that. The tint, a bit, bit more purple in it. The orange, make it like it lands on fire. So double click to go back out of that. Sharpness, noise reduction. Noise reduction is a good one. So if I zoom in on this and I go to denoise, I increase my luminosity. And I do it around the colors too. I can go to advanced setting. I can boost up this if I like. And I might be happy with that. And I zoom out and it's a clearer, cleaner image. 
That's denoise. I can select landscape and I can go dehaze. Should I choose to? I would never go very much to dehaze, but if you're shooting on golden hour, you can put this up. If you have a lot of greens in the photograph that you want to increase, you can do that right there. And vignette, you can control your vignette. So you can take a vignette off. See, that's increasing the vignette in the corner. See up here, just increasing that and I can go the other way and I can push back. Sometimes when you edit Astro, it creates too much vignette. So you might want to take it off and you can change the size of the vignette. All right, so that's what we had and that's what we had. So that's what we had and that's what we have. What we had, what we have. We can go to catalog and that shows us there what it is. So let's now go to a normal landscape that I have. We double click on this. We're going to go to presets and we might go, this is a sunset preset. So we're going to whack this one on like so. Um, uh, we're going to put it about 76 and then we're going to go to edit. In edit, we're going to go to edit tools. We're going to adjust the overall edit of our preset. So I'm going to go to color harmony and I'm going to take just a bit out of that because it was a bit too much. I'm going to increase the, no, brilliance is just, just too much. <laughs> I can change the color contrast if I like. And so the color harmony option, just so you know, if you go to tools and you go right down the bottom, you have the color harmony option here. You have a dodge and burn, super contrast, and so on and so forth. So let's say we're happy with that. Um, can you see this? See that? That's a little eyelash or tiny bit of hair on my sensor. So we can get rid of that. We do that by going all the way down to clone. Once we go to clone, we select part of the photograph and we might choose there. And then I might come over to here and I might just make it a bit smaller and apply it there. And look at that. It's, it's completely gone. Incredible, right? Absolutely incredible. And if I zoom in on that, there's nowhere to be found. You can't even see where it started and where it stopped. That's how you get rid of those little dust spots or issues on your photograph if you have them. One of the massive benefits of this is you have a sky replacement and that's under favorites. And so I go to favorites and I can enhance and I can enhance the accent of the photo. So it makes all the bits of the photo you want better, better. And I can sky enhance that like so. But let's say I've got to this point, I'm like, I'm just not happy with the sky. Everything else is a banger, but the sky is not. So then I go to sky and I might then choose which part, which sky I'm looking for. So I, I want a sunset. Um, and let's say I want something like that. Now that looks epic. If I double click on that, it boom, fills it. In. Now, you'll notice on my original photograph, if I look, just hold the I button down here, you'll notice these clouds right on the horizon of my original photo. What happens is when sky replacement takes place, it looks at the differences of contrast and assumes that's the difference of horizon. So at the moment, it thinks those clouds are the top of my horizon. So if I increase closed gaps, it increases the cloud on the horizon. And if I decrease closed gaps, it takes care of that and I can fix the details. And it's a careful balance in this scenario because of the light uh, that is applied to the pier. I can change the horizontal position of the sky. So I can actually pull it all the way down here if I want. I'm going to put it about there because I think that feels about right. I can change the vertical position of it. I can change the horizontal position of it. So if I think, oh, I actually want it something like that, I can flip it from side to side and I close that down and I can close that down. So then along there, scene relighting. So sometimes when you put a sky in, you want to relight something. So I'm going to relight, see, see the difference the, the relight makes on the scene because it's relighting this scene based on what this is. Relight saturation, relight human, we've got humans in the shot. But in this case, you have to be really careful. You see how it's choosing what to shine through on the pier and whatnot. And you can do sky adjustments too, where you make the sky blurrier, should you choose to, you make the sky grainier. You can increase an atmospheric haze. And I would suggest taking a photograph that doesn't have the intricacies of the gaps between the pier. This isn't the best photograph to show you on, but you can see what it's capable of. 
and uh, and just the wonderful ability this has to change a sky should you not be happy with the sky that was originally in your photograph and of course there's all those ethical issues about whether you should do it or not but let's just take off our sky so if I just go like this it gets rid of my sky it goes back to my original shot I'm going to go enhance and then I'm going to increase the orange I'm going to increase that then I'm going to go all the way down to color harmony and I can change the color harmony of this shot now that feels like it's a bit too warm so let's do that color contrast I can increase the color contrast and I can start to change so if I felt like it was actually a bit hotter it wouldn't, wouldn't look like this but you have the ability you see that's actually pretty pretty powerful and pretty significant um, I can go super contrast and I can change the highlights contrast the mid-tones contrast and the shadows contrast Look at that beautiful rock just there so you're getting a bit of a feel for what this can do now dodge and burn is I've found to be very uh, sensitive and so what you want to do is if you're going to dodge and burn I want to actually lighten this rock and so I do this where, and then I can see how well that's gone. So you see it's had more effect on this than it has on that. So I want to darken that. And I might say I'm just going to increase the amount of this. And I'm going to be careful to stay within the lines. And you have a finished piece like so. Now, how are we going? Let's try a photograph I took of myself. And the reason I took this ridiculous image is because it has all the elements to it that you might pick up when you're taking a portrait. Now the photo itself is ridiculous, I understand that. But let's go to presets here, and we're gonna go down and we're just gonna show you what's possible through a portrait. So there are experimental collections. So look at these that you can instantly add, and I don't know you, but it just, I'm intrigued by all of these. So you can add them, you can have easy portraits. We can go to high key, which makes everything brighter, tack sharp, fade, vignette, low key. Not quite done yet. There's an essence collection. I can go still frame, marquee, fashionista. That's me, isn't it? I'm a fashionista. Rembrandt, flawless. And again, whichever one of these you choose, you can then edit. And then we have monochrome. And monochrome, we have elegant matte, soulful, film grain, lighthouse, low key. Pretty cool, right? But I'm not going to choose any of them. I'm just going to edit this for what it is. And what I'm going to do is just drop down and show you what these portrait options can do. So portrait bokeh means you can add artificial bokeh. You can have more bokeh in yourself. So if I clip on and off, you see the edges of me, see my hair around the outside, it's all gradually being bokered. So I'll just click that on. So it's, what it's doing is it's taking me right here and it's making me focused and it's taking the edges of me and making them less focused. That's what bokeh on the portrait does. But what if I go background, and this is really nifty. So I go background, I go amount, and then I go, I want the background to be much darker. I don't want it to highlight any glow. I want it to be a bit warmer. I want depth correction, so uh, the depth correction and the edge correction is about how neat the line is around the edges of my jumper and my head. If you look at around my chin just here, it's a bit of a mess. So we're gonna go back like this, see if that fixes things up. Okay, depth correction just here. And there was obviously a something behind my head just here that caused it to do that. So you get a bit of a feel, you can change how much is in bokeh and um, how much is in blur and how much is dark in the background. Now, this is really great. Face lighting. So I'm in front of a window and I can increase the lighting on my face quite significantly, right? Really cool. It retains the detail of my whiskers, but at the same time, uh, just lights my face. Now this is great. This is amazing, this part. Let's go on a diet, ready? And look at this, boom. On a diet, just like that. Fat Ralph, Fat Ralph, Thin Ralph, Fat Ralph, Thin Ralph, Fat Ralph, Thin Ralph. <laughs> eyes? Uh, my eyes are grey. They look a little bit brown or hazel in this, but look when I select grey. 
Oh, I've just become a vampire. Look at this. If I go blue, you know you meet some people that just have blue eyes. They're just piercing like that. Well, I'm one of those people. Now, iris flare. You can change your iris flare. You can look at this. This is great. Let's just make my eyes massive. Yeah, it's just bizarre, isn't it? Woo! <laughs> now, the reason you might do this is for someone that you want their eyes, you'd never go to 100, but somebody might have struggled to see their eyes and you can pop them out just a little bit just so it's appropriate. Let me just calm this down so we're just a bit more um, sensible to where I might normally choose to um, to to edit at. I can go eye whitening. Now my eyes are fairly white, so they're not too bad. I can go eye enhancer. So if you're taking a portrait of someone, you go eye enhancer, you bring that up. Red eye removal, there's no red eye, but if you had that, dark circles around your eyes. So if you haven't slept for ages, look at this, just, just bring that on. Now this is what the effect is so far. And if I fat my face out and we just look at the eyes, See the little difference that makes to make my eyes pop out? And then I can improve my eyebrows. I don't need improving my eyebrows. Are you kidding me? Gosh. And then my mouth. And here's what I like about the mouth. You can just go straight to teeth whitening and you can whiten the teeth. It selects the teeth. It whitens them without you having to select them all and go through all of that rigmarole. My skin, I can pretty my skin up by adjusting it by shine removal. You see my forehead? If I go shine removal like so, it takes down that shine that was up here. So more shine, less shine. I can remove the skin defects by doing this. And as you can see, my skin is nearly perfect. So there's hardly any. I can transform my body if I need to, and I can operate in high key should I want to. <laughs> and once you've done all of that, let's say we can actually go uh, dodge and burn and we can uh, want to lighten the side of my face and so I can just do that really gentle like that and look see that's a hundred at 50 strength and look at the damage it does to the photograph so I simply go back like this I might take this down to say nine and I might just apply it like so and then you can click on here to see how much the apl application has done so that's good that's a little bit I might say oh, let's just go a little bit more around here a little bit more up here and then I can again just if I go if I go to say color harmony and then I'm like oh actually I want to go back to dodge and burn you go back to dodge and burn and it's back to where it started so you need to go edits and then you go to dodge and burn and that's how you can control what it looks like right here and as you can with the other options and here's your raw edit so if you want to just if you want to just darken that down you want to increase a bit of contrast you want to reduce some highlights uh, you want to increase your shadows on your face and then you think actually um, I need to crop this in so you can go up to here you can go crop and choose what sort of crop you want on your photograph on your face and just drag that to whatever horrifying thing you want horizontal alignment just tweaks it so it's good to go I go apply and if you want to edit anything you just go here now once you have your photographs, and for some reason they should pop up there, but I'm having a little bit of difficulty with that, you can then just select which photo you like. There you go, that's my original one, that's why we just edited. And you can export by doing this and choose where you're gonna share it to. And you are good to go. Whew. What do you think? Pretty epic software, right? Like the stuff it's able to do saves you hours of trying to muck about with that stuff by yourself and I've spent a lot of time in Photoshop over the years and you're just tweaking that stuff it can brighten teeth it can change your eyes it can take those rings around it can put more light on the face it can take a D shine off it does all the general landscape edits really really quickly and then you can add some extra special things to it or you can play around with those presets putting all sorts of different effects on your photograph just to give it a different edge and a different feel and achieve something differently 
I would strongly encourage you to give it a look. There's all sorts of different plans and different pricing options for you down below. There's a link in the description. And I thank you for watching this. I hope you've benefited from it. I hope your, your, your creativity has just been expanded and broadened by the brilliance of Lumina Neo, which I can highly recommend to you. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe, thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video.